I'm so glad that you could come over today for our um, little meeting here to discuss your party menu. Yeah, I know that you had wanted to collaborate on some ideas together and I found this very neat magazine that has a, tons of recipes that I think we could find something you might like. Yes, so not only are there tons of recipes you could make at any point in time, but there's a variety here that I think could give you some ideas and allow me to help cater your party to some of these lovely and delicious ideas. And I don't mind putting my own twist on the recipes, but I know sometimes um, you really want to make sure that you have food items everyone will love, so I think that this magazine will have a few ideas we can work with. Yeah, it's Taste of Home Annual Recipes, 135 Proven Recipes from Home Cooks, so I think there will be a variety of items that the whole party will enjoy. Mm -hmm. Oh, on the cover, this is Double Chocolate Espresso Cheesecake. Sounds delicious. Well, as we go through the magazine today, I'm going to go ahead and type in our ideas in my computer. So, if that works out for you, you want to get started? Okay. so you know the items we'll be going through today. Looks like we have appetizers and beverages, breakfast and brunch, sandwiches and soups, main dishes, sides and salads, breads and muffins, cookies, bars and brownies, just desserts, so, as far as I know, you don't have exactly a theme or type of particular food that you would solely want at the party, so you told me earlier you're looking for a wide variety to kind of cater to any type of... Yeah, everyone has their different favorites, you know? First section is appetizers and beverages. This looks like the best hummus. Then we have here roasted Brussels sprouts with sriracha aioli. This dish constantly surprises you. It's crispy, easy to eat, and totally shareable. Yet, it's a vegetable. The recipe is also gluten-free, dairy-free, and paleo. And it can be vegan if you use vegan mayo. So it has Brussels sprouts, sriracha in the sauce. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, no, I understand that. We love Brussels sprouts, but sometimes it can have an odor when uh, making it in the house. Yeah. And since we are going to be making the food prepped there, I can understand your hesitation. Maybe we find some other ideas. Okay, so.
So here we have green tomato salsa. We have tahini limeade, which is a non-alcoholic beverage. Mm -hmm. It has tahini seasoning. And then there's the limeade with lime juice, water, some sugar. That's pretty much it. Yeah, it sounds like a really nice twist on lemonade, honestly. And then we have blue ribbon beef nachos. And this comes with um, a variety of different toppings. I think we could even alternate the toppings to things you would really enjoy or even different types of nachos depending on the variety you want to make. You want to do the limeade and the nachos? Okay. I'll go ahead and type that in. And blue ribbon beef nachos. Yeah, we can definitely swap out some of these ingredients for alternatives. We have a hot shrimp dip. Oh, that's interesting. This is interesting. It has butter, small green pepper, green onions, garlic, cream cheese, shrimp. Okay, yeah, we can keep going. Brie cherry pastry cups. You like that? Yeah, it has puff pastry, brie, and it says cherry preserves, but you could do apricot, raspberry, anything else really. You want to type that one in? Okay. Brie. Cherry pastry. Cups. And this last one here is pepper jelly hogs in a blanket. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so this is crescent rolls with fully cooked spicy sausage links cut into one inch slices and you, they are apparently topped with some pepper jelly and some mustard. What do you think? Okay, I'll add that one in as well. Like I said, we're here just to get all of our ideas down and we can always narrow things as uh, at a later time. Perfect. Let's keep going. Next we have some chocolate date energy balls. Mm, that sounds like a really interesting snack for like the week, but maybe not the party. Mm -hmm. Then we have blackberry shrub. Interesting. Yeah. This is frozen blackberries, cinnamon stick. Cider vinegar, sugar, water, and sparkling water. So this kind of emulates kombucha in a way, in terms of potentially the flavoring. Yeah, so here it says it's a non-alcoholic syrup made with fruits, aromatics, sugar, and vinegar. So I think this the vinegar is more like an acting ingredient to create the syrup you're looking for. something you're interested in. Yeah. We can always put a twist on these for alcoholic versions if you wish. Blackberry shrub. Alright, next we have Jamaican beef patties. It has curry powder, ground beef, pepper, medium onion. Um, it kind of reminds me of an empanada. Mm -hmm. Then you have pichiquin halloumi fritters. Yeah, it has cornmeal, fresh basil, sweet onion halloumi cheese, prosciutto, and some peach. That sounds really good. You'd like to try both? in beef patties and peachy keen loomy fritters. Okay. Let's get to 
There's a few hummus um, options. Argentinian, fun and colorful, go Greek. Are you interested in having hummus as an option? Okay. Yeah, I think it could be one of many dips that we have. And we don't necessarily have to make it from scratch, but the toppings could be something we change up. Or we can make it ahead of time. Tropical Appetizer Party. So this is more tropical items. Hawaiian egg rolls, easy coconut shrimp, and it looks like these are the, the recipes here. And pineapple salsa, yeah. You like all of these? Okay, we can add them in. We're gonna have quite a few but yeah, I think that's a good idea to list as many as possible now so that you have options to narrow down from. And we have easy coconut. Shrimp coconut. All right. And this is just going over how to make some umbrellas. But honestly, I'd probably order those. <laughs> I don't think you'd want me to craft those. I could definitely cook for you though. Alright, now we have hot chocolate or hot chocolate. Warm up with a steamy mug of sippable cocoa dolled up with a sweet selection of stirrings. There's hazelnut mocha, biscoff, peppermint red velvet, creamy white, and chili orange. You're not looking to have hot chocolate? That's okay. Next we have breakfast and brunch. Um, I don't think you're going to be doing much breakfast and brunch items since it's more of an evening affair, but we can quickly go through this section and if there's anything you see that you want me to pause at, just let me know. And this is interesting. What is this? Oh, these are smoothie bowls. Yeah, that's interesting. Ooh, fluffy banana pancakes. That sounds nice. Casserole. We have salmon croquette. croquette. Breakfast sandwich. We have jalapeno sausage quiche, croque madame, the best French toast. Oh, oh yeah, brioche bread is makes some of the best French toast or toast in general, honestly. even recommends day-old brioche bread. So, it's interesting. Breakfast to go. Yeah, this would be great for like a weekly menu. So, you can definitely borrow this if you're looking to add more recipes into your daily uh, meal planning. Freezer breakfast sandwiches. Okay, now we're in the sandwiches and soups, so we might find a few ideas here. So this is um, General Sow's Chicken Sandwich with Broccoli Slaw. That looks really delicious. It has some really tasty ingredients and has a little bit of spice to it in terms of spiciness, but you can always sort of tweak that down depending. 
Would you like to try these? We can make them into sliders, I think. Yeah, like mini versions. Okay, I'll write that down. General sauce chicken sandwich with broccoli slaw. Lebanese street sandwiches. Ooh, it has onions, parsley, they're made from whole pita breads, and has some ground beef in it. That looks really delicious. Okay, yeah, we can make mini versions of these too. Mm -hmm. Of course. I'll write that down. Next we have brown sugar bacon BLT sandwiches. It's a little more little, yeah. Not interested? Okay. Alright, so next we have grilled pimento cheese sandwiches. I think that's how you say that. And a sourdough bread pimento cheese jelly and thick sliced bacon strips. That's interesting. What do you think? No? Okay. Then we have, looks like a curry and rice noodle soup. Yeah, it's really tasty ingredients. Maybe not the soup. Okay. All right, we can keep going. Well, look at that. Looks like we have hot Italian party sandwiches. Hawaiian sweet rolls. Um, has pesto, mayonnaise, mozzarella cheese, deli ham, hard salami, deli pastrami, some parmesan cheese. Lots of interesting ingredients. And uh, sounds really tasty. Yeah, why not? We'll write it down. Hot Italian party sandwiches. Alright, next is often a party favorite, spicy cowboy chili. So this has some pretty standard items for your chili. We have chipotle chilies, beef stew meat, kidney beans, variety of taste ingredients. You'd like to skip this one? No problem. Okay, next we have toasted chicken salad sandwiches. Rotisserie chicken, celery, green onions, mayonnaise, capers, so that's nice, dill pickle, slices of French bread, Boston lettuce leaves and thinly sliced radishes. What do we think of that idea? All right, I'll go ahead and write that in. Okay. Next we have hoisin chicken wraps inspired by Vietnamese pork banh mi's. That looks really fresh. I think that would be a great addition. Okay, I'll go ahead and add that in. Poison chicken wraps. Next we have black bean rice burgers. Mm-hmm. Not a fan. No worries. Uh, this one is a steak sandwiches with crispy onion. Ooh. The fried crispy onions are a family favorite. I thought it would be amazing to put them right on a sandwich. The chimichurri inspired mayo gives fabulous freshness and flavor. Oh, that sounds delicious. What do you think? I think that would be a winner for sure. Okay, stick 
steak sandwiches and crispy onions I love crispy onions they're one of my favorite toppings yeah okay we love Lucy oh interesting yeah I can read that so it says, in South Minneapolis, the burger battle over who actually created the cheese-stuffed Juicy Lucy is molten hot to this day. Both Matt's Bar and the 5 to 8 Club, two no-frills dives located on the same street, three miles apart, lay claim to inventing the burger in the 1950s. At Matt's, you'll see it called Juicy Lucy. We forgot to add the I, they say, but whose is best is up for debate. They each serve up to two thin burger patties with crisp edges that are sealed around a mound of piping hot cheese that oozes from the center when bitten into. Both bars warn their customers of the tongue-scorching surprise inside the burger, but sink your teeth in and you'll see it's worth the risk. I've never seen a burger like that before. Is this something you wouldn't be interested in? Not really? Okay. Next we have Mexican Street Corn Chowder. Interested in this one at all? Okay, we can keep going. So it looks like we have quick and easy skillet lasagna here. Maybe not this one. Okay. Then we have hearty chicken enchiladas, Portuguese shrimp, and feta stuffed kibbe with harissa. I think that's how you pronounce that. Anything interest you? You'd like to try the shrimp and the kibbe. Okay, go ahead and put that in. Feta stuffed kibbe. With Looks really tasty. Yeah. Alright. I like that you're doing a variety of things and not having to stick with one type of uh, cuisine. All right, next we have crumb topped sole. Mm -hmm. It has parmesan, mustard seed, soft breadcrumbs, green onion, sole fillets. Not really? Okay. Then we have crispy coconut sh chicken nuggets with creamy Caribbean salsa. That sounds really good. This coconut chicken recipe is such a fun change of pace. The salsa's tropical flavor makes the dish fresh and bright. Yeah, it has pineapple, jicama, sweet red pepper, mango, jalapeno, cilantro, ginger root, lime. It sounds really tasty. We should definitely add it. Okay. Crispy coconut chicken nuggets. And who doesn't love chicken nuggets? You know what I'm saying? With creamy Caribbean salsa. Okay. Alright. We have Beard, bacon, macaroni, and cheese. Oh, that was a resounding yes from you. Okay. I'll go ahead and add that one. Beer and bacon, macaroni, cheese. Next, we have Air Fryer Nashville Hot Chicken. Nashville Hot Chicken's a long time favorite. And they're cooking it in the air fryer to make it faster. Maybe a little healthier as well. You'd like to try that. I wouldn't blame you. I think it would actually pair well with the mac and cheese too. Okay, so 
we'll do that one. I love that we're getting so many ideas. And I know it's going to be difficult to narrow down maybe just a few of them, but I think we can find room to add in a, as many as we can, maybe in small patches so that um, at least everyone can try something once, but we don't need to overcook anything for crazy amounts of leftovers because odds are people may not eat every single or try every single item. All right. So next we have easy ground beef stroganoff. Maybe not. Okay. Then we have Mexican steak fajitas. I think this would be a lovely addition. It's really easy to really throw together and also for people to munch on during the festivities. What do you think? Yeah, we can tailor it um, if you're wanting to omit anything or, you know, change up the spices a little bit, but I'm sure it will be really tasty. Okay. Next we have 30 minute coco vang. That's a very classic dish. Maybe a little too... Yeah, that's okay. We can move into another option. There's vegan butter cauliflower. Ah, oh, so it's a take on butter chicken, but instead of chicken, it's cauliflower. Are you interested in that one? Not really? Okay, we can move along. All right. Oh, look at that. They have baked feta pasta. There's a reason this recipe went viral on TikTok. It's simple to throw together and incredibly creamy and delicious. Well, is that something you've tried before? I don't think I've tried it. Maybe? It sounds pretty easy to put together, so it could at least be a pasta option. Yeah, and we can always swap out the cheese if we wanted. Baked feta pasta. Why not? We can all try it out. Quick and easy chicken poke bowl. Interesting. Usually poke, you would think of sushi fish, but they're probably using chicken in case it's hard to find some sushi that is, you know, healthy to have. It can be a little difficult depending on where you source your fish. You want to skip that one? No. Next, we have sheep pan jambalaya with cauliflower rice. No? Okay. We'll continue. Alright, we have baked pasta punesca. You feel good with the pasta you have? Okay. Then we have shrimp tostadas with avocado salsa. Uh, yeah, I think we already listed some two shrimp ideas already. Okay, so we'll, we'll skip this one. Oh wow, the best sirloin dip roast. That might be a nice thing to have on hand whenever. Yeah, this looks divine, but we'll probably skip this for the party. I think we have plenty of protein options already. And it, yeah, it might be a little difficult to get for so many people. I agree. Well, looks like we have quite a few items here. There's some slow cooker, baked potatoes, whiskey barbecue pork. That looks like a great option. Slow cooked salsa, ballpark food trays are the perfect size for a solo spud. Plus cleanup is easy. That's a good idea. Hot chili cheese dip. Now that's a smart idea. Yeah. Ah, interesting. So these are the recipes of the items in the front. Did you want to include anything here? 
the whiskey barbecue pork and the hot chili cheese dip. You got it. Okay. This is gonna be the largest party you've probably ever had. Or at least I hope a lot of people are coming to eat all of this food that I'll be making for you and your guests. <laughs> That's okay. I think we'll find ways to share the leftovers, if there's any. Yeah, and they're apparently good to prep for the event, so those are good ideas. Okay. Next we have sides and salads. So this might be a nice addition. We have creamy celery root and pearl onions. Not really? Okay. So next we have maple ginger root vegetables. Might be a little more wintry than what we're looking for. Then we have chicken strawberry spinach salad. Yeah, that sounds interesting. You want to keep going? Okay. All right. All right. So next we have savory winter squash pie. This looks beautiful. Yeah. I think that might be a little bit more than what we would like to do, yeah. This is squash, kale, and bacon gratin. This casserole is packed with layers of flavor, but uses only a few choice ingredients. Even your kids will be coming back for seconds. Want to write that one down? Okay. Squash, kale, and bacon Sweet potato kale pilaf. Nothing here. Okay. That's okay. This here is air fryer stuffed sweet potatoes. And here we have balsamic Brussels sprouts with pears. Maybe the stuffed sweet potatoes? Okay. Yeah, we can make those. Um, we can cut them in half or cut them in more bite sized. Pieces. Okay. And we want to skip the Brussels sprouts again. No problem. So here we have cherry tomato pasta with avocado sauce. This looks like your classic pasta salad. Okay, I can add that one. Cherry tomato pasta with avocado sauce. Very fresh and summery. Yeah, it has basil, cherry tomatoes, parmesan, avocados, a lot of fresh items. Okay, then we have smoked macaroni and cheese. Yeah, this is kind of similar to the other mac and cheese, so maybe we stick with that one. Yeah, okay. I think that one had beer in it anyway, so it sounded more exciting. Here we have glazed marsala carrots with hazelnuts. Mmm, this is an elegant side dish for company, but it's also easy enough to prepare for your family on a weeknight. Marsala wine makes it so deliciously different, unlike any other carrot recipe you've tasted. You want to add that? Okay. I think it will great make a great side dish. with hazelnuts. And then we have cauliflower au gratin. Let's get that one. Okay. Alright, now we've moved into breads and muffins. 
Not sure how much bread we're probably going to bake, but we can always evaluate anything you might like and see if we can replicate it. So first off, we have pumpkin egg braid. Yeah, pumpkin is a little bit out of season right now, so. All right, next we have gluten-free spiced sweet potato muffins. So that's interesting. Not, not enticing for you. That's okay. Oh, these look divine. Chocolate hazelnut espresso cinnamon rolls. These jumbo cinnamon rolls will stand alone at your next brunch. Bursting with chocolate, hazelnut, espresso, and cinnamon They'll please any palate and bring to mind your favorite coffee shop bakery. I mean, this sounds so delicious. I have to make it. Absolutely. I honestly would just eat them all myself if no one else did. Yeah, let's go ahead and add it. Go ahead and add that. This one, the cinnamon rolls. Okay. Oh, interesting. Conchas. Conchas is a Mexican sweet bread. It's a breakfast or snack pastry found all over Mexico. And it's a fluffy brioche like dough with a streusel topping scored to resemble a shell. The pastry can come in a variety of colors and other shapes, but these have a plain chocolate streusel. Yeah, that might be a little more complex. Okay, um, this is grilled elod flatbread. Ooh, you like this? Yeah, we can have that. Everyone loves a flatbread. Here we have Tahitian breakfast treats. Interesting. This is a healthy take on the Tahitian coconut breakfast treat called Fidi Fidi, which is typically fried. My version is baked and rolled in a spicy island sugar mix. At first I thought these were donuts. They're probably a, you know, kind of a type of that, but maybe not. Okay. Um, this is Parmesan herb rolls. We're already having a lot of sandwiches, so maybe not the rolls, but uh, we can find some tasty bread either way. Okay, so next we have healthy avocado pineapple muffins. And here we have carrot zucchini bread and buttery rolls. Anything look enticing here? No? Okay. Well, we're getting towards the end. Looks like we're getting to the cookies, bars, and brownies. All right, our favorite section, the sweets. I know it's mine. Here we have cream cheese, red velvet, thumbprint cookies. Okay, yeah, we can keep going. Here we have gluten-free brownie bars, rolled butter almond cookies, and caramel heavenlies. These look like bars. They're made with marshmallows, graham crackers, butter, brown sugar, cinnamon, vanilla extract, sliced almonds, and sweetened shredded coconut. If you can't find mini marshmallows, use regular size ones and cut them into quarters. This sounds really good. Caramel Heavenlies. Okay, I'll add that. Okay. Here we have mocha walnut macarons and chocolate zucchini cookies. 
This recipe started out as a plain zucchini cookie, but over the years I added nuts and chocolate chips. These soft cookies never make it to the cookie jar. What do you think? I think the mocha walnut macarons sound good. Or macaroons, as they say. I never know which pronunciation is best, but we'll just say macaroons. I think that's the most popular translation for us. Here we have two-tone caramel brownies. Wow, they said these are the best brownies I've ever tasted. A huge crowd pleaser. Maybe we ought to try them. Okay. And they're caramel, which you and I both love caramel, so I know that might be really a favorite. Here we have cranberry Nutella sandwich cookies. You want to try these? They do look really tasty. Okay. Cranberry Nutella Sandwich Cookies. Snap Crackle Swap. This looks like Rice Krispie Treats. And these are all the different kinds. You have Rocky Road. Maple bacon. Some of these are interesting. Morning fuzz, funky monkey, Oreo, watermelon. Watermelon? I guess it looks like a watermelon. You know, I'm not a huge fan of Rice Krispie treats myself, but if you would like us to make them, I'm happy to do that. Okay, no worries. We can skip that. And this is other desserts. We have brownie kiss cupcakes. Mm, that sounds interesting. Okay, I'll write that down. We can always decide later which desserts we want to keep. Okay. Indonesian bananas foster. What do you think? really? Okay. Keep going. We have five minute blueberry pie. That's a little interesting. There's peanut butter silk pie. Ooh, that sounds really good. You want to try that one? Okay, peanut butter. Sounds delicious, yeah. That's lovely items in there. Rainbow Sherbet Angel Food Cake. It looks really pretty. Is it something you'd want to try? No? Okay. Next we have roasted Grape and sweet cheese, phyllo or filio galette. Faced with an abundant grape crop, I had to come up with some creative uses for them. This became one of my quick and easy ways to make an impressive looking dessert. It's fun to work with phyllo dough, and it bakes up golden and flaky. A layer of orange kissed cream cheese is topped with roasted grapes. Then I drizzle on a bit of honey and add a sprinkle of coarse sugar to finish it off. This sounds really interesting and also very easy. Yeah, why not? We'll add it. Roasted grape. Never really roasted grapes before. Sweet cheese. Filo. I think it's filo. Got it. It's like a pastry. Then we have Brazilian peanut candy. That's interesting. Is that something you want to try? We can keep going. Let's see. To see how much more we have. Just a few more pages. Okay. Alright. Here we have banana fudge pie. This just 
dessert, which is like a banana sundae, is both light and good tasting. I make it often. So, that's this pie here. You want to add that? Okay. Banana fudge pie. Sounds really good. Then there's red velvet cake in a jar. It says red velvet cake, chocolate pudding mix, chocolate chip. What do you think? Okay. We'll keep going. Alright. So here we have Israeli Malabi with pomegranate syrup. Not really? Okay. Then we have triple berry mini pies. I think we already have a few pies. Did you want to try this one out? You're good with what we chose? Okay. Alright. Next we have Almost It's It Ice Cream Sandwiches. Ooh, that looks really good. It's snack heaven. Ice cream, delicious oatmeal cookies, and a touch of chocolate. Really simple, but most likely very tasty for variety of people. Yeah, let's do it. Interesting title. Ice cream sandwiches. And they can be prepped at a time, which is great. Then we have Mama's Coconut Pie. Lots of coconut. I don't blame them. Coconut's delicious. What do you think? Not today. We can keep going. Alright, here we have Just Say Cheesecake. New York Cheesecake with Shortbread Crust. Ooh, that looks so good. What do you think? Not really? Okay, but it looks good. Butter pecan cheesecake, and then we have the double chocolate espresso cheesecake from the cover. You want to use that one? No, you were waiting for this. They really kept it to the end for us. Okay, let's do that. Double chocolate espresso cheesecake. I mean, it looks heavenly and they mentioned it was on the cover. And look at that, they really did keep us hanging until the very end. So, looks like we've reached the end. And we can always refer to the index if we want to reference anything quickly. That's the end of that. So, I'll go ahead and Make sure I've saved this file of um, menu items for the dinner party in a few weeks here, and I'll make sure that the next time we meet, we can narrow down some choices, and if I have any suggestions on twisting up the recipes, I'll let you know, and then we can finalize the menu together. But yeah, thank you so much for walking through this with me. I feel like this gave us a lot of great ideas and I think we will end up finding something that your, all your guests will enjoy. Yeah. So, hopefully that um, was helpful for you and if you have any questions, you have my contact info and can just reach out at any time. Yeah, I really enjoyed walking through all of this with you and I look forward to our next meeting where we can finalize the menu. Okay, thanks so much. I'll see you again next time then. Okay, all right, I'll see you later. Bye.